Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And today we are going to make um, my take on a flip-flop journal. So um, this is easy and has um, some fun signatures. So you open it up and there's a single signature right here. And then you keep going and there's another signature here. And then if you turn it this way, there's a signature in the back with pages. And um, I used a variety of really pretty papers by Sylvia at Las Minas Amores. And um, the primary paper or kits, I guess, that I used um, along with just other pieces that I had was from a Maria. It's a new kit for September 2024, and it's a story of a Italian girl, lady named Maria, and it's kind of the photos and letters, I guess, that she sends back home um, telling her story. So um, the other papers that are in here are a freebie that Sylvia is offering that is um, inspired by her design team, which I'm on. So um, some of the images and um, things that you'll see in here are inspired, I guess, by different members um, of her team. And um, this one here is from my sheet. And she got my hair right and my glasses and things that I love, um, art supplies and journaling. And then this strip here, um, I have five kids and I have two little fluffy dogs. So um, anyway, there's different um, different ones here from different members of the team. And um, I used just a few of those throughout too, just because they were so fun. Um, this says, greetings from Virginia. So that's definitely me here. Um, anyway, and then just some different... Um, Different, uh, this was from one of the other design team members, but just different papers that I had. And um, so anyway, we're gonna make one so you can know how to construct one like this. So again, I'm gonna use just a variety of papers from Las Minas Amores, and she has a great Etsy shop if you wanna check her out. So let's get started. So this is one of those where um, we're gonna attach the papers to make this shape like an M. I hope, I hope that looks like an M to you guys. Um, and then if it's turned this way, I guess it looks like a W, right? Um, it's still pretty flat. I love how it opens and interacts. So I hope you guys like this design. Um, it's not hard at all. Um, what you want to start with are three pieces of paper. And um, I've prepped some. And it really can be any kind of paper that you want. Uh, it might make sense to use paper that has a landscape orientation, but I'm not doing that because I don't mind if mine are sideways. Um, and you can also print them on both sides. I'm not going to, and you'll see why, and then I'm going to um, add some to a couple of the opposite sides that are still white, but you'll see as we put these together. So these are just some, you need three, and these are just pages, again, from that Maria kit. So I'm going to use that one that one, we'll use this one to start. Um, and I already cut off kind of the white border that prints sometimes with digitals. Um, I've already cut those off, but it left me with papers that are 10 and a half inches, which is right at 26 and a half centimeters, if you're interested. So 10 and a half inches by eight, or a smidge over 20 centimeters. Okay, you can make yours any size you want. So first thing to do is fold all three pieces in half. And again, you want them to, to be about the same size, like right at the same size. And we're gonna fold them all in half. And you know, you're gonna get to decorate and do all kinds of things as you go, so. All right, um, you can kind of decide which piece you want to be the front. Um, again, mine are sideways, so but I'm going to probably add things on the front like I did here. So, you know, just kind of pick. <laughs> now, um, I think I'm going to put... 
I think I'm gonna put this one on the front with just this flower and then I'll layer something else on here. So then the next thing that you're gonna do is take one of the other pages because we are going to actually just glue them together. So let me try to think how to turn that. So if this is gonna be the front of our journal, pick your next page and you've got it folded in half. Now this time you'll need the fold to be to the right. Have it open on the left because we are gonna glue the cover to the back side of this page. And actually, that's not what we're gonna do because that's gonna then make this. Mm. It won't be the cover anymore. It'll be an inside page. So let me think about that. If I want this to be the cover, we'll do it like, <laughs> you guys, it's always funny when I do this because I have to figure out what I'm doing. Okay, pick out your cover. We're gonna start over, pick out your cover. And I'm gonna have this flower be in the left, bottom left corner of my cover. All right, so it's gonna open with you're gonna have the crease on the right hand side and it's gonna open from the left. Your next page you need to open more traditionally. Your crease is on the right, it opens to this side. And we are gonna glue this page to this page so that then when it closes, this is our cover. Okay, let's glue it together before we get confused. So again, if you need to see this one more time, this one is opened to the right, this one's opened to the left, and we're gonna glue this panel to this panel. Now I can see my where I folded it in half, and this is gonna come right up to this score line. Um, so just line them up as neat as you can. Mine are not perfect. Like I said, I trimmed off the um, Ah, that border that prints and um, you know they're not exactly exactly the same size but I'm adding glue to this panel and this is my line co PVA glue it gives me a tiny bit of wiggle room but it holds nicely um, you, you could glue, use, I guess, like a glue stick if you wanted to. Um, it may make, until it dries, your paper a little soft or warped, and this glue won't do that. So if you're interested in the supplies that I'm using, um, there's a link to my Amazon storefront, and you can check out some of my supplies. But this is the glue that I'm using. <laughs> uh, Lineco brand PVA, pH neutral glue, and then I put it in the little bottles. Okay, um, but on that Amazon storefront, it's also like the paper that I use and all kinds of things. So if you're interested, take a look. All right, now we have this. Now this page obviously will need something on it because it's just white, unless you want to leave it that way. We're going to open it up and now we have this page um, that we are going to glue the next sheet to. So you can decide which way you want that one to go. And let's make sure this is gonna work when we do it. Yep, then we'll have the W or the M, okay? All right, bop, flip, flip bopping. Um, it probably is easier, you know, if you have paper that doesn't have too much of a directionality to it, but like me, you can make it work, you can. All right, so I'm gonna add glue. I could add glue to this side or to this side. I'm just gonna add it to this flap. And I hope you guys followed how I put these three pieces of paper together. And that is our main construction. So it's not hard, you just kind of have to Whoa, you just have to hold it and not let it wiggle. Um, no, you just have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing and you'll be okay. And like I said, mine are not lining up exactly even. Now, if that's gonna bother you, I'm gonna tell you, show you a trick here at the end. If you want to, 
See how it's off just a touch around? You could lay it on your trimmer and trim it off if you want to. It really doesn't bother me. I'm gonna be inking and adding all kinds of layers and things to mine, so I'm okay with it. Now, again, we have to figure out um, what you want the cover to be. And I was saying this was going to be my cover and that honestly did not work because it, op well, it works if I put this up to the right hand corner, the top there, but it's this page that I said was going to be the cover, right? <laughs> you guys have to bear with me. It's easy to get confused. And usually I'll number things before I make a video so that I don't confuse you guys. So I hope y'all are okay. This really works either way. I can make um, this be the cover with it turned to this way, or I can have this be the cover. And I like, what do I like? I like them both, so I'm gonna make this be the cover, like I had originally said. Now again, I will most likely go through here and really ink this up. I, I like that look. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, it also, the Distress Ink, you know, when things are off just a little bit, um, it make, it kind of covers up those errors, so to speak. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time inking right now, but I am sure later this one will get inked like my original one. <laughs> Alright, now these pages, um, I am going to add paper to because I want them to um, not not just be one layer and I don't want them to be plain white. So one option is to take some more pieces um, from the kit and just start layering paper on there. I could cover them with um, book page. Um, just, I could have again printed on both sides but I knew I wanted a whole nother layer anyway. So I think, ooh, I really like those flowers, but I don't necessarily want to cover them up. Let's see. I think I am going to use my, um, my, my floppy journal here to help me measure where I need to tear my paper. And then we're just going to layer it on there. So I can see the end of my paper right there. I'm going to do my best to hold that straight. Just kind of eyeballing it. I think I ended up wide, and that's all right. I'm going to glue this down and then trim off this edge. So I am going to add glue to this panel, and then we'll use the scissors and trim it off. And I could have done that before I even ripped it the first time. This is um, ham crafting without measuring. <laughs> But you could also measure this piece and then cut it, right? All right, right up to the fold line, right to the bottom, here. And it's not hard at all. Of course, I find my scissors, here we go. And I'm just gonna flip it over and we're gonna trim it off. So if you would rather measure and then put this on your trimmer, go for it. Or measure and then use your ruler and tear and have a nice kind of torn edge. That would work too. I'm going to have that for something else. Cute. So I kind of have the blue cool colors happening over there. And these are a little bit warmer, but I think they work together. All right, now this one, I want to use this image here. So this one, I am going to have to kind of pay attention to what I'm doing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark it. I know I need to cut or tear it in a straight line where that mark is. So I'm going to line it up with my grid. And um, we'll just tear it. And I think that'll work just fine. So I've just um, got my paper straight. That's my mark. It's on this line here. And it is going to be pretty close to doing it that way. And now I have this strip to save for later. 
All right. So the next thing we're gonna do after I get this glued in is, I'm gonna do it the same way and trim it off at the bottom with my scissors. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is I am gonna put a few pages. Um, so we'll have the three signatures. Um, you could make this more like a folio and not put the signatures in. It would still be, I think, a really nice project if you wanted to just do that. I think adding the signatures gives us a little bit more, of, or gives me a little bit more of a feel than it is, um, you know, a journal. So if you wanna skip the next step and not add signatures, that's okay. And yours, I would think of would be more of like a folio. All right, so let's see how we're looking. I think we've got our um, flip-flop going pretty well. All right, so a couple of different ways to think about it. I'm gonna basically work the first signature. So let me show you. We're gonna have one signature here. We're gonna have the second signature here. And then when you open it up, the third signature will be on this side. Okay, and I'm just using, um, this is just some paper from an old um, ledger kind of journal that I have that I pulled the paper out of. And um, it's just two sheets. You could do five, you could do three, you know, you really can. Um, I do want them to be, um, to fit in here and not be taller than my journal. So mine are, seven and three quarter inches tall um, this way. And then the width of mine, my pages, in case you're interested, are 10 inches. So I believe this is going to fit in here nicely. It looks like it will. All right, and we're gonna do the simple um, three hole pamphlet stitch. And I'm not gonna make a template or anything because um, I don't think we need one, and I'll show you how we're gonna do it. So I do like to clip my papers in so they stay, um, stay where I want them and they don't wiggle too much. And we're gonna use a ruler and a paper piercer. Let's see. Um, and again, we are right at eight inches. And so I want to put a hole, kind of hard to see my, my center. I should have inked it, but I didn't. It's right here. At four inches, we're gonna poke a hole. And then I'm gonna come in like an inch and a half and an inch and a half from this way, which is at six and a half. Okay, so just a really easy three hole pamphlet stitch. And we'll sew this one in, and then we'll sew in the next two. Now I used, um, a lot of times I'll use a wax thread, or I will use embroidery floss, or all kinds of things, but I decided just for the um, feel of it, I wanted to try using this really skinny um, twine. So we're gonna use that, and I usually use do mine three times the height of my page, just to give me lots of, of extra. And I have a big eye needle here, so this will fit through. I don't want it to get too frayed, so I just kind of pull it in just a little bit, and that's enough to hold it on there. Now I've got lots of videos that show you how to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch, but in case you're new, we'll just go through it. I start inside the middle hole and come through to the outside. And then you want to come back through, my holes got off just a touch, but that's okay. Back through the top. Oops, I'll leave that tail there. All right, now we are going to skip the center hole and come down through the bottom and back out, okay? And then we're gonna come up through the center hole where you already have a string. 
it's that simple. All right, now you do like, I like to look, make sure everything looks right, and it does. The big thing here is you wanna make sure one, one end of your string and the other end, the two tails, one's on either side underneath the center string, okay? Whoop. Well, I wasn't expecting that to tear like that. So that is a little bit of a concern using this twine. I've never had it do that before. Now I'm pulling as hard as I can and I can't get it to tear. Hmm, we're gonna try it again. If you're worried about it, use um, floss or some other kind of waxed thread. So you're gonna get to watch me do that again. All right, so while I'm doing this, we'll just chat a bit. So <laughs> my last video, I let you guys know that I was home from vacation, yay. And it is now September, which is hard for me to believe. Again, in through the center. Um, hard for me to believe that it is September, um, but I am, I enjoyed being in Florida and being at the beach, but now I'm definitely ready for some fall fun. And I've got some more fall crafts planned for us. You guys would think I had never done this before as much trouble as I'm having today. I just lost the end of my thread, but it's okay. I can do it. I'm not going to give up. Yeah, so I'm ready for some more fun fall crafts. So stay tuned for that. And, um, oh goodness, I'm starting to think about all of my Christmas and holiday projects too. So, um, that will be happening as well. I was really thinking I might do a, some of the fall craft fairs and festivals and, um, and, and sell a lot of the holiday. Um, I just tied it three times. Um, some of my holiday crafts and I just don't know if I'm gonna get to it. I have been so busy. Um, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. But even if I don't, I'm gonna be doing the holiday and fall crafts for us and it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so I always kind of double check what I'm doing. So that's my first signature. We're gonna skip this one and we're gonna put one right here on this side of the journal. So again, same paper, we've got two sheets. We are going to line it up and clip them in so that they don't wiggle, hopefully. And so in the next signature. So you, this is something you guys can help me with. Um, let me know what type of, whether it's, it's still early enough to let me know what type of fall crafts you might like to see. Do you like um, crafts that feature uh, pumpkins? Do you like, um, you know, the, the track, the fall festival kind of look? Do you want um, Christmas crafts? Do you want like some of the larger journals? Or would you like to see more um, like gift items or ephemera? You know, what, what, what really are you interested in? I know I'm planning to do a whole um, release of Christmas um, little golden book journals. Um, they, I've been working on those actually already. Uh, they're, they're in the works. In fact, I may give you guys a sneak peek here in a second. I've been working on the covers and I have a lot of um, different ones. So those are gonna be out and for sale. I'll put some in my shop and I will probably put some on Etsy. So if you know you want one, um, let me know early so I can reserve it for you. Um, I always, every year, um, we get closer and closer to Christmas and then I have people say, oh, I really wanted one this year and um, we run out of time. So if you know you want one, send me a message. Um, I would say a comment here on YouTube probably isn't enough to reserve one, but you can um, email me, um, or if you wanna send me a message or leave me a comment, 
and then we connect, but make sure we've connected, not just through a comment, so that I can reserve you one. And I'll show you some of those here in just a second. They're not completely put together yet, but the covers are well on their way. And I'm excited about that. That's gonna be the big ones that have the five signatures and um, the variety of vintage papers and all of that. So it's gonna be really cute. All right, so we got the second signature in. And now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna sew the last signature in right here, okay? And again, you could make your signatures out of different kind of paper, any size you want, multiple pages. This really can handle larger signatures. Um, I just decided to keep this one kind of slim today. All right, one more to go here. But before I sew those in, let me show you what I've been working on. So, and I've got a variety. So, um, these haven't been taken apart yet, but this one is my Christmas treasury, and that's going to be its spine. They're going to have the two inch spines. I've got a Rudolph. And this Rudolph is from 1982. I have ones of different age, different ages. There's the Nutcracker. That one's going to be cute. Um, the little Christmas Elf. Um, he is really cute, isn't he? He's from 87. So that's one, two, that's four. So I have six that I've already put the spines on. Let me grab a couple for you. Let's see, Frosty, look at Frosty, isn't Frosty cute? Um, so I've already put the cover or the spine on that one and I've got to just make the signatures. And then this one is Jingle Bells. And I think the papers on this one are so cute. This one's from 1964, so this one's a little bit older. But I'm also working on a variety of uh, tassels that might go on them. This is all still in the design stage. This one's the 12 days of Christmas. So anyway, and I'm pretty sure I have um, a Here Comes Santa Claus. I don't know. I've got to look through and see which ones I still have. But they're always a big hit at Christmas, so if you know you want one, let me know. Um, and of course, I have my videos that show you how to make the little golden book journals and preserve the spines. The the gold strip, it's not really preserving the spine, it's preserving the gold strip. So, um, you can go to my channel and search in the videos for little golden books, and there's several, but there's um, one video that, like, from, it, it, there's multiple parts, but really shows you the construction and then it gets into more decorating and that kind of thing. Um, and I have a video that also helps um, if you wanna keep the story pages um, more in order. Um, there's a newer video that shows that, so you may wanna watch that too. Anyway, lots to do with the little golden books and they're so fun, so. That's something to think about for Christmas. But so anyway, I know I'll do that and I'll probably do some other large journals because they're just such nice gifts and um, are fun to make. And usually at the holidays, I do quite a few um, ephemera style like gift tags because I just, I know a lot of people don't really care, I guess, about their packaging and their wrapping of their gifts, but I love to make a gift look special with special wrapping. And if you guys do too, then you'll wanna stay tuned. Sometimes I use just pretty scrapbook papers and stickers that I find. Sometimes I use actual um, vintage greeting cards, postcards, things like that, and give them new life, which I love doing. Um, and of course, digital printables and all those kinds of things. So if that's of interest, let me know about that. And anything I haven't mentioned to you, if you're like, ooh, I would like your take on, you know, let me know. Um, it's also fun to, if you make those kind of gift tags, like I know a lot of people, they'll do um, uh, homemade treats at the holidays to give to friends and neighbors and things. And if you like to do that, then 
adding a little gift tag that you've made. Um, like I said, kind of an ephemera style or vintage style, so fun. And I think it really um, makes a gift special. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of those types of things this holiday season myself. So I'm excited. All right, let's see how we did. I think this is gonna look great. So that's the front. We've, we've, we've put it together, you guys. There's your first signature, second signature, and third signature. Got the W and the M, okay? And then all we can, you know, all that's left really is to have some fun decorating it. Whoops. <laughs> and I have a few things already cut out, um, quite a few from the design team inspired freebie that uh, Sylvia has. And I need to find out how you can get a hold of that. She sent it to us and said she was going to be having it just as a freebie. So I have to ask her how you guys can get that. If you're interested, leave me a comment and let me know and I'll make sure I find out for you. Um, and then the rest of these papers that are from Sylvia are the Maria collection. There's quite a, there's several new ones um, out for September, um, but I used Maria. Okay, so you can see the M there. I think I'm gonna turn this into something. I really wanna use these flowers right here. And so, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I was thinking belly band, but I didn't wanna cut her head off and I didn't wanna lose the flowers. And so we might just make this one into um, a little like corner tuck, not necessarily a full pocket, but a tuck. I need to keep, I need to keep it up the right direction, don't I? <laughs> Because if I don't, we are going to end up with things upside down. Now, I actually, I'm going to use this on the front because I'm going to warm up. I've got kind of the cool blues, and now I have some more of these warm colors. So I am going to use this here on the front. Not quite sure how I am. If I turn the rose where it looks like the flowers are in the right direction, the writing then is upside down. So I'm, I'm struggling here a bit. I think I don't mind if the writing is upside down. I could also do it horizontally and make a pocket on the front. Ah, I think I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna have the writing upside down. And I think I'm going to grab this um, greetings from Virginia that's so cute. And we're gonna layer it on here and maybe add a little piece of lace. I am not going to go through and decorate the entire journal in this video because I think the video's already gotten kind of long, um, but we'll do a couple of little things together. All right, that's not working for me, so we're gonna move on to something else. Maybe we'll put these sweet little children right here. So I'm using um, Distress Oxide and Walnut Stain, my favorite brown. Do you guys have a favorite brown? <laughs> I don't know how many people um, have that conversation. What is your favorite um, color of brown? Um, but if you're in the junk journaling or rubber stamping or scrapbooking or craft world, I think it's probably a reasonable question to ask. Um, is what color brown do you like? Okay, we're gonna just lay these down, not overthink it. Cute, 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 cute. Makes me happy, let's see, I've got a roll of lace and we'll just do we'll tie a little bow soften it up just a little I make it a tiny bow all right so I've asked you guys a lot of questions so I'm expecting lots of comments please <laughs> and I do my best to respond to everybody's comments um I look forward to seeing them. I'm gonna use just a tiny sliver 
like maybe a piece that big of two-sided tape. I'm gonna put it down and we're gonna plop our lace bow on there. It isn't gonna go anywhere and it's not too sticky. All right, sweet. Now we can start adding pockets if we want to and start decorating the pages. One thing that I did do um, is I left the strings long because they were kind of making me happy, but I like putting things on the string. And because I wanted to leave them long, I didn't necessarily, a lot of times I'll put little hearts or little circles right at the end, at the bottom. And what I did this time, I'll show you guys, is I just took some pieces that were kind of, approximately a rectangle right and then just folded them in half I tore the edges so that they're even on both sides add a little bit of ink and then all I did was I just at different points you can make them larger smaller whatever um, I just glued them in here well that's part of the whoa need that um, just added glue and folded it over and you can bring it all the way to where you crease it or you can leave it sort of in the middle. But I just think it gave it a fun little look. So we'll do another one in a different shade. Let's see what we've got. I'm looking at scraps on my desk too. Um, all right, I used the Be Kind on the original one, and I really like this. This was from the sheet, again, um, that Sylvia made inspired by me. And I thought that was sweet, because that's one of my um, favorite things, you know, when you're thinking about other people. I'm just going to rip this. Um, is, you know, we can all just be kind. We can be kind and generous to each other. And Sylvia is so sweet and generous. Um and is very um, easygoing with her design team. <laughs> uh, and always is telling us, don't worry, don't stress, have fun, enjoy the papers. And I like that, makes it easy. Okay. And then this one, I'm gonna put up a little bit higher, maybe about right there. And you can put a whole bunch, you can do different shapes. I've just been doing kind of rectangle or I did some that were probably closer to a square shape. Um, it just depends, but I think it just gives it a little extra. You could have multiples coming down. The other thing that would be fun, and I put them away, is if we did one um, big enough to put um, a little butterfly sticker on. So let's look and see if I did. This will be fun. Oh, goodness. So these are just what I call grown-up stickers. Oh, and it's obviously the side has split open. So grown-up stickers in that, I'm trying to find a tinier one. Um, I've always loved stickers since I was a child. Um, these are kind of transparent ones. I also like the ones that look like washi tape. Oh yeah, this is going to work. So cute. So we're going to add a butterfly. Um, but you know, just not that kids can't use these, but they kind of go with my grown-up crafts, I think. All right, so I just kind of put one half on one side, one half on the other side. Isn't that cute? I like it. Okay, so we can decorate all the pages. We can add pockets, um, belly bands, tuck spots, whatever we want. Um, one fun thing to do is to use some of the different pages, um, as the, the elements of the pages as pockets. Like I think this one will fit in here perfectly and be a nice horizontal pocket on this page. And if you want to put like a notch, you can. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to glue it down on three sides make us a pocket. And the nice thing is I'm not having to cover up any of the pictures of Maria, just some of the writing. So that'll be cute. And I kind of like mixing the kits up and having different, um, different things to look at. 
I think it's fun. All right, so I will go through and add some more things to this one, especially I think on these pages that are um, that don't have much. In fact, let's put something on here together. We'll bring some of the warmth in. I've already torn this apart um, from one of the pages. So we'll just use it for a tuck spot. And this is what I was saying is you can glue two sides. So we're gonna glue the bottom and the side that's along here and it'll work just as good as like a pocket, but I consider this more as a tuck spot since it's open at the top and the side. So once that is nice and dry, it won't lift up. <laughs> And then I can tuck things in there, okay? All right. And that kind of brings some of the warmth in there too. All right, I really am gonna stop now. You know I'm gonna keep going though after I turn the camera off. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys like it. I hope you will make one. Leave me a comment, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more fun videos. Have a great day, everybody. And thanks, Sylvia.